Welcome to Learn Sibelius 6 in one hour. You can download a PDF of the Eroica score that we'll copy in this course from my website www.composerhome.com. If you want, you can also download catch-up files which allow you to jump straight into any individual lesson. And now there's an ebook for you to download to your PC, Mac or mobile device from www.amazon.com. Just search for Learn Sibelius. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to record from a MIDI keyboard. Of course, to do this, you'll need to attach a MIDI keyboard to your computer. There's plenty of information on the internet or in my ebook about how to do this. Now, there's also a new option in Sibelius 6, which is this button here, and that opens up the on screen keyboard. So you can click on notes on there on the keyboard, and if you click this button here for QWERTY input, that maps the notes just of an octave of C to C with the uh, keys on your keyboard, A, S, D, F, G, H, so on and so forth. So you can actually play off your computer or your laptop and um, do simple melodies and things straight into Sibelius without needing to attach a MIDI keyboard. However, for this particular option, I want to record the opening melody in the cello part here in the Eroica Symphony. I think I'm going to need a full-size keyboard, so I've hooked one up to my computer. Now, before we get going and before you ever record, go to Notes, Flexi Time Options, and in here you can set up your recording before you've got started. There are a bunch of different options that you need to check here. The first one is under Flexi Time, and Flexi Time is so called cool because Sibelius will attempt to follow the tempo as you play. So if you speed up, it will speed up. If you slow down, it will slow down. Now they've got different settings here for how high you want that to be set. I personally set it to none because I'm a terrible keyboard player, so I like to actually just try and keep in time with Sibelius rather than the other way around. We're also going to turn off this option here, record into multiple voices. And the reason for that is that we don't actually need to record more than one note at once in our cello part, as you might if you were in, say, a piano part, where you might have notes of different lengths in the same staff. Now we're going to click on the Notation tab at the top, and this is the most important setting before you record in Sibelius. It's called Adjust Rhythms. In some other programs it's called Quantization. You set this before you record, so you need to think what's the minimum duration that you're actually going to record. If you look at the cello melody, the shortest duration that I play is a crotchet. So if I set that to crotchet, Sibelius will fix the timing of every note I play. If it's slightly ahead or behind that crotchet note length, Sibelius will make sure that it displays nice and neatly as crotchets, and I don't have silly note lengths left there, like uh, tied over hemi demi semi quavers. And you can see here as well, there are a few other settings for staccatos and things like that, but you don't need to worry about a lot of those right now. So once you've done that, click OK, and we're ready to record. Now we tell Sibelius where we're going to record from by clicking on the bar we want to begin recording, and then press the record button. But before we press the record button, if your keyboard playing's about as good as mine, which is terrible, you might like to drag the tempo slider, which is just to the right of the record button there, and if you drag it over to the left, that slows down the tempo as you record. So you can record your part at a slower tempo, and then speed it back up when you play it to your friends later, and it will be impressively quick. So I'm going to hit the record button and have a stab at recording this cello melody here in the Eroica Symphony. When it's finished, you can press escape to stop recording, or the, just click the stop button or the record button again on the playback window. Now we just want to review our recording. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? That's pretty impressive for my level of keyboard playing. I can see one obvious error, which is that Sibelius has chosen to spell the C sharp in Beethoven's score as a D flat. There's a reason for this. Sibelius knows you're in a flat major key, so it's spelled that accidental as a flat falling note, which makes sense to it. But in this particular case, we want to change that to C sharp as Beethoven did, so I'm just going to highlight those bars by clicking on them and shift clicking on the second bar. And then you can respell any accidental by pressing the return key or enter on a PC. And as soon as I press that, you can see that it toggles there between the C sharp and the D 
All right, everything else there looks pretty good, so I might just need to complete this now by adding the phrase markings as we go along. Now, phrase markings in Sibelius are made up of long slurs, so if I look at the score, I can see there's one that begins right at the start. So I'm simply going to click on the first note and then press S for slur, and that draws a slur to the second note. Now to space out that slur, I simply press the space bar. So I'm going to tap space bar a couple of times to space that out to go over those four notes and create a phrase mark. Again, now I'll click on the next note where the next slur starts, press S, and then space bar once. Click here again, press S again, space bar once. And you can see that very quickly I can add all of the phrasing to this melody quickly and simply. S space space. Now, should you ever need to change the automatic shape that Sibelius draws with your slur, if you zoom in on the slur while it's selected, you can see six handles. And you can click on any one of those little square handles there and drag it around to alter the position and shape of the slur. If you want, you can create some pretty weird looking slurs. But you'll find that generally Sibelius does a great job of drawing excellent automatic slurs. And it even does some cool things like moving slurs out of the way of notes that come underneath them.